In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a WWVB simulator using an Arduino Dume Milanove. I picked the Dume Milanove because it has its crystal set in a standard HC49 package, which is easy to unsolder and replace. Ideally, for this project to work best, you need to replace the 16 MHz crystal with a 15.36 MHz crystal. That's because the WWVB carrier signal is supposed to be 60,000 hertz, and you can't evenly divide 16 megahertz down to 60,000, but you can evenly divide 15.36 megahertz down to 60,000. Uh, you can use an unmodified 16 megahertz Arduino. The code can work. We have to change one line of code, um, but you won't generate the frequency as precisely, and that'll result in some reduced range trying to send the signal to the local clocks. Um, in addition, we're going to be using a GPS module to actually receive the time we're going to then rebroadcast in the WWVB format. I picked one made by Global Top. It's compatible with one you can buy from Adafruit called their Ultimate GPS Module. They make a little adapter, sort of like this, that uh, makes it easy to hook up to an Arduino. I'll show a schematic about that later on. I also have an LED hooked up here that blinks out the beginning of the transmit frame, which is once a minute. And this fits together. And that is going to completely comprise our little our project for our WWVB receiver. If you want more details and you'd like to try out my code, I'm going to direct you to my website, Wayne's Tinkering page, which you can Google. Or you can go directly to the site by typing in sites.google.com. Uh, this particular link should be the one at the top. And there you'll find the description that talks about the project, the reasons why I did it. Some additional photographs. Um, here's a block diagram describing the, the final result, which is the Arduino module hooked up to a, a GPS module. The TX and RX lines are really just used to set up the GPS module to put it into the correct mode where it puts out the right signal it can use. And then a PPS signal does most of the work, generating the frames and so forth. They get transmitted. Here's my test setup. I, eventually, I, I connected the antenna and wrapped it around a link to ferrite rod that seemed to provide better coupling to the uh, the clock. But you can actually probably string a wire around the room and that should work about as well from what I've heard. Uh, here's some more details about how it uses the the internal fast PWM timer or timer two to generate the, the actual broadcast signal. And then shows an, another picture of the inside of the uh, the clock that I tapped into so I could actually watch the transmission on my oscilloscope. And here's the screen capture off my oscilloscope showing the, the signal that I'm transmitting from my local transmitter uh, as being received by the clock. And finally, if you want to download the code, there's a link at the bottom where you can download a zip file containing the Arduino project, the Arduino sketch that you can, you can compile and use. If you'd like to learn more about how WWVB broadcasts, I'm going to refer you to the Wikipedia page. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll find a section that shows the transmission format looks like this. Essentially it takes one minute to transmit what's called a frame of data, where one bit is transmitted over the interval of one second. There's sections for transmitting minutes, hours, and the day of year. It only transmits a two-digit year value and various other bits that describe when leap year is going to start and end. A marker bit is transmitted by setting the weak carrier for eight-tenths of a second followed by the strong carrier. The zero bit reverses this by sending the weak carrier for only two tenths of a second and the strong carrier for eight tenths. And finally, the one bit is a 50 50 ratio. 
It helps a lot to be able to see the signal being transmitted, so I modified my atomic clock to tap into the demodulated signal so I could actually throw it up on my oscilloscope and then was able to use that to monitor by transmission. And here you can see what I was able to observe on my scope. The yellow signal at the bottom shows the sync signal that shows the initial bit zero transmission. And the other arrows point out how you have the, the full modulation and the weak modulation as a way of denoting the different kinds of bits. Here's a quick demo of the system in action. The LED blinking means that the simulator has begun transmission of the first frame. So we're going to speed up to 8x so we don't have to sit there one minute of transmission time. The next blink of the LED is going to indicate the beginning of the second frame being sent out. Uh, this is all it takes to sync the clock. So at the beginning of the next frame, you're going to see the LED blink again. And if you watch the clock, you're going to see it set to the correct time. Of course, the conspiracy animation at the beginning was just for fun. But if you like this video, I hope you give it a big thumbs up and tell your friends. And if you're a user of an atomic clock, you might want to let the government know that you really would appreciate them keeping WWVB around a bit longer.